Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to game number one between Brick House and Phoenix Rising Moonstone. We're going to go ahead and see a match off between these two teams. First of all, I do want to make sure that everyone is aware, even though it says both teams have zero points, do not be fooled. This is actually a late played game number or week number one match. So neither of these teams have played anyone. By the end of tonight, one of them will, or possibly both of them, will no longer be at zero points. So look forward to that. We are going to go ahead and um, move over to our lovely map screen real quick. I'm going fast because the teams are almost ready to go and I don't want to be late. So, um, oops, did I forget to do a thing? I think I forgot to do a thing. Nope, nope, I am actually okay. I just can't read. We just go ahead and have um, Brickhouse won the coin flip and has chosen to have um, first pick, which means that map pick went over the side of Phoenix Rising Moonstone. First off, we do go ahead and have Brickhouse banning out Towers of Doom and Tomb of the Spider Queen. Obviously not liking the T maps we have running around the Heroes of Storm. On the other side, we did have Battlefield of Eternity and Volskaya Foundry being taken out by Brickhouse, or by uh, Phoenix Rising. I know colors. Um, we do have Cursed Hollow will be game number one between these two behemoths, these powerhouses. Cursed Hollow is a bit interesting. To me, that actually says that because this was picked on the behalf of Phoenix Rising, that possibly Phoenix Rising is not as confident in their double soaking as their opponents. Because you don't have as much brawliness, you actually have to split into three different groups. And so, and the map is big, so rotations are a bit harder. So it kind of means that you actually think that your opponent is not good at the second solo lane. But regardless, we'll go ahead and go into the draft right now. Get ready for it, because here it comes. Hello, 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 everyone. I hope you're ready for all of the fun, because I definitely am. I haven't got, I didn't get to cast at all yesterday. It was just awful. It was like the worst thing ever. So definitely don't want to do that again. Oh, and I probably need to prepare for um, gambling, because I know how you guys get. One moment, please. We are waiting for that first band to come in. Uh, Globals are very, very, very strong, so I would not be surprised to see Falstad or Brightwing being banned out. But not so far, not so far. Almost, I almost typed Phoenix Rising Moonshine. I kind of still want to, to be honest. <laughs> because I'm mature. Oh, interesting. Oh, I definitely, definitely, definitely... I mean, obviously I'm a caster. I have to be unbiased. But, um, Mesos over on the Phoenix Rising Moonstone side is my old tank. Back from the uh, Car Crash Sounds days. So, definitely like has my pocket favor. It's interesting that we actually had Vala being banned out by Brickhouse. Very, very commonly, the team that has second pick kind of is forced into banning out Zagara or Vala. So I think if they had waited on the Vala, they may have not had to ban it. But regardless, they did what they did. And also, the Tychus ban is very interesting. Tychus ban to me says that obviously we've got something big coming in. A Deathwing, a Cho'Gall, a or just Diablo. Stitches, possibly. We do have Dovetail taking Hogger. Now, I do know Weapons really, really likes Hogger, so that is kind of a quick pickup coming out. And hey, remember how I said the Globals were very, very powerful in this map? We do go ahead and have Sinar picking up the Brightwing, and then Dahaka picked up by Weapons. Now, Dahaka is interesting. Dahaka has a hard time actually winning the... Oh my god! I talked about Cho'Gall. I thought I was memeing. But you know what? I, I never meme. I was completely serious the entire time. So we do have Dizzy being Cho. What is this going to be? Um, Dizborg? Dizborg? And then the Gall does come out of Shadowborn. When I saw that Tychus ban, I kind of suspected it. But still... The fact, because of how it was set up, though, I am a bit surprised they didn't wait on the Tychus, because the Tychus kind of gave it away. I feel like they could have gotten away with banning the Tychus here, 
Oh, but they do get rid of the Aura, because the Aura is also... I guess there is a double solo lane, so it makes sense. So you can't go to go ahead and go with Wolf Boy. A lot of damage. And then a new Brock for stuns per day. A new Brock's uh, Cocoon is very good, because you kind of get to take two people out of the fight for a while. So we still need one more DPS on the side of Phoenix Rising. Um, we need a healer and our... Other DPS on the side of Brickhaas. Not surprisingly, I was going to say Rhaegar's a very popular pick, it's Ancestral, and then the Orphea. So, Stitch, where are you going to do? What damage will you have to help you deal with the Jogal? Your team needs your help. What will you bring them? All right, and yet a third global. They're gonna be they're gonna be able to move across the map instantaneously. I do like this strategy. They should be able to win in experience, but it's just gonna be very very hard to actually brutalize down that Joe Gall. But we'll go ahead and start up the prediction. Go ahead and bet for whoever took the Zebo. Whoops! <laughs> Looks like that strategy failed. You miss wind up bird. What? We'll go ahead and get into the game. If that means my beautiful face will be going away, you're not gonna be able to look at it anymore. I'm sorry, but. Uh... Yep, we're gonna go, go in the game now. We got through a whole um, tenth of the load bar during that introduction. Fantastic. Love to see it. A lot of points on Phoenix Rising so far. Everyone hasn't bet. A uh, ten, ten point bet on Brickhouse has the potential to make you rich. <laughs> I don't know why people have faith in Brickhouse. I mean, I know why I'm rooting where I'm rooting, but that's because I'm biased. And one of my personal, like, good friends is on one of the teams. But I will try not to let that influence my casting. I will do my very best. I want to do the very best. By Cho'Gal because the Raven Lord's curse at my best. I don't know. I'm, I really should like plan these out before I actually say them. But I never do. I always say that, but then I don't do it. Oh dear, they're waiting on me. Whoops. <laughs> All right, coming into the game right now, we do have our red team, Brick House, the bodacious bruisers, the horrible hospitaliers. Would you go ahead and have uh, Dizzy Wingman playing the Cho, Tater coming in on that Orphea, Shyborg on the Gull, Zesty playing Rhaegar, and Dovetail over on the Hogger. On the other side of the battlefield, let me go ahead and get this annoying cursor guide out of here. You want to look at that? We do have Stitch playing that False Dead, Mesos on the Anubarak, Sinar on the Brightwing, T-Cat is playing the two, Grey Mane, and one. Weapons coming in on the Dino himself, the Hekka. Now, interesting, we actually... Uh, okay, Zesty is just going here for this vision real quick. Hopefully they won't ride too far out, because they, it's going to be a potential 4 versus 5. Well, the team's going through. We do go ahead and have the Frequent Flyer coming out of that False Dead. Um... Jimin cooking. No other questing talents picked up. Although, interestingly, Orphea has not actually taken her level 1 talent yet. I'm not 100% sure what she's waiting on. A little bit of damage on the Stitch, but nothing too, 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 too bad. Does only go down to about 75% health. And it looks like the Dino and the um, Dehecna are moving up top. I love offlane. You'll just have to kind of deal with it. You know, down here we do have Orphea versus Falstaff. Um, no. Orphea has a very, very, very easy time against like less mobile opponents. Falstaff does have a movement ability, but you know what? That was very, very close at the end of the day. 
for one half. Um, the Mercer camp is being picked up initially over on the side of Moonstone. Sidar and Tcat moving back there and taking care of that, leading poor Mesos to deal with um, Disborg and and Zesty. Just look like we've got some healing coming up here because poor um, Dovetail has not been doing well against first weapons. And you know who's doing even worse? Or if he does get taken out by the Birdman. Orphea is full of the power of the shadows, but can't stand to electricity very much because electricity is bright. That's how that works. You can always kind of tell. Disborg does very wisely come down here in order to soak experience. It says we cannot fall behind. We've got a team full of globals. We can't give them an advantage before they even start using their global power. But because Disborg is done there, we actually have Tater coming in the middle. But Tater is now fighting a, a oh wow. With Zesty going up there, Tater's now fighting three versus one. Which is, thankfully, Orphea has very, very nice clear, so they can't fight too long without being un underneath the tower range. Stitch looking not too healthy and is having to play back behind the towers. Meanwhile, T-Cat and Sign are going to move up here and continue to take more mercenary camps. This will be the third and final mercenary camp on the map. Oh, never mind. Actually, it's not been picked tribute. up over here. And earn my fate. That's the tribute coming down up in the but downward position. Yes, that's what I said. Up in the downward position. You heard me. Of course, weapons is not moving down here. We do have T-Cat waiting to see if he can interrupt the rotation, but not quite, not quite, not quite. He's just moving up to see if they can facilitate a gank, but no one actually moves forward. And instead, everyone is moving down to this location, except for, of course, the Dahaka, who can just burrow in. There's almost a full level leap for Moonstone so far. The question is, well, they might even just give this up and just extend their lead, or they might come in. Nope, they go ahead and give that up. They aren't able to um, wait for too long. They just go ahead and say, I'm going to push as hard as I can. We do, of course, have a mercenary camp pushing into the middle lane right now. So with that being taken care of, um, Tater moves in. Mesos has to fall back. The other two do, do safe rotate in. But it does look like we've got the wall down. We've got one of the towers down. The second tower may go down. Looks like it almost assuredly will. And we do have level 7s picked up on the side of Moonstone. But Tcat might play the prize here. We do have Brightwing tries to come in, but unfortunately we've got wolf pelts for dinner. Don't eat a wolf pelt, actually. That will not be very healthy for you. One to one in terms of kills. A little bit more advantageous, but still um, a slight experience to lead for Moonstone because they just stayed in the lane the whole time. is coming up, or it's doing its best to, anyway. More Berserys coming up. Tribute is showing up in about two seconds. Right now, we do go ahead and have Brick House arranged in the area around it. But Mesos is going to be here for a burrow and a stagger in order to make sure they can't pick that up. But once again, we do have not a commission coming in. They're just trying to stun this. They're not trying to actually stop it. T-Cat does move into the area. They still are continuing to stun. Um, the middle camp is pushing in. It looks like mostly cleaned up already. Dovetail trying to pick this up. It does look like decent zoning. I don't know if they can stop them. And nope, Dovetail will just go ahead and pick that up. Second trigger on the side of Brickhouse. But once again, a level lead for Moonstone. Falsehead just kind of pushed the entire time, and Falsehead does have two giants helping them out. Looks like Dovetail is coming down, trying to deal with this. It says, hey, bird. I'm a gnoll. I literally eat birds. I grew up in an area where there's a lot of vultures around, and they're delicious. A little bit of wow lore for you, if you didn't know. Are they thinking about a boss play? It looks like the answer is no. Although they definitely fooled me with that. 
They do have level 10s. They're going to have Cocoon. No surprise. Cocoon is definitely the ult to take out Cho'Gall. Mighty Gust, Cursed Bullet, Isolation, and Blink Kill. With that, their opponents just now picking up level 10. Looks like they are not trying to move in. Weapons goes ahead, and weapons and scan are just bullying this poor Cho'Gall. And that's a presence I never thought I would say, bullying the poor Cho'Gall. We do have one of the tribute pickups. You know, down here, Stitch does go ahead and have to use his Gust defensively. Just get away from me. We do have Upheaval, uh, Porta Pult, Shadow Ball Folly, Ancestral Healing, and Crushing Jaws coming up. Gak is moving mid lane. That mid lane experience has been largely neglected. This is something you don't see very often. Uh, the two off laners are fighting in mid lane. <laughs> With no one else around. That's interesting. Now this is a tribute location that actually favors Brickhouse. We'll have to see what they can actually do with it, but it's going to be very, very, very effective. However, Cho it looks like they may go ahead and pick that up and get the curse, but Cho'Gall is being just absolutely collapsed and pounced on, and it looks like there is a double kill. Hero slain. But can they stop this? The answer very much looks like no. Okay, they're going to go ahead and pick that up. Oh, here is the false that comes at the last second. Um, they're nice, nice, nice barrel roll out of there, but Stitch is going to go down. However, that is still going to be an advantage anti fight for Phoenix Rising because Chokal is not back, and that is, of course, two heroes. However, they just meet. No, never mind. That is the other way around. Rhaegar does go down. Curse of Bullet lands and just pop, 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 pop. It does look like they're doing an evade on the boss camp of their opponents. Take out because then wisely steps back. Lot of damage coming out here. Weapons just eating up essence. I really wish this display told me how much essence he was playing with right now. Alright, that is taken out. There's need to be careful here that this is actually a 3 versus 4. Dyborg gets a lot of Shadow Bolt onto the boss, but the boss doesn't super seem to care. And meanwhile, their opponents are going to go ahead and just get out of here. Um, now, here's the problem. Of course, if you're a brick house, you have to defend this. You can't just let them get the fort for free. And they may get the fort anyway, actually. And the answer looks like yes, they do get that fort. Alright, Mesos is in here. Sino tries to pick this up, does not quite get it. Chobo Chogal does come back out of there. We do have the false head flying in. False head is landing. Do get a catch. Oh, but actually, I don't know what happened there. It's like the crushing jaws didn't actually happen. There's a nice double zone with Mesos coming up to the side. Zesty goes ahead and gets picked off. Dyborg very, very, very low, but it does look like Dyborg is the only one left, and Weapons is on the hunt. Looks like we're going to have Tribute being picked up for Phoenix Rising Moonstone right now. And now. The Raven Lord's curse is upon these buildings. Most of these issues being made to mid lane. Bottom lane has already been taken out. They don't want to push too far. Even though they're only against Cho'Gall, the death times are very, very slow right now. We do go ahead and have a lot of damage coming into mid. Um, T-Cat is running out here, but so is Disbo. All three forts on the side of Brickhouse do go down to the might of Phoenix Rising Moonstone. Dovetail fighting like the entire army and winning, of course, because he is a hero and they are not. Oh, feels bad to have to use curse time in order to actually pick up a boss. I don't disagree with it, though. Like, you know, your entire opponents are up and you would have to push extremely far to get any value. But it just, it feels yuck. But you're also losing a lot of experience in the lane right now. And so the curse If you go ahead and ping to get this camp, their opponents are having to stay back. There's a lot of attention being paid. It does look like the wall on the top lane is still strong, while the mid lane is still strong. And yep, on the bottom, we do have a mm, contiguous series of walls going around this base. But right now, the hogger and the orphia are having to deal with this hogger, or with this, this golem. That's almost a hogger. Oh, unfortunate double stun would have to go inside a brick house. You hate to see it. But this this attack is not being 
Oh, I, I agree with you, Wind Up Bird. I'm not saying it was the wrong call. I'm saying just you hate to see that you were in a position where that was the right call. Because, like, it's so it's so well known that boss is not... Using the curse to get a boss is not the best value. But they just gotten all the value they could reasonably expect to get. Alright, here's everyone moving up, up moving on up. Now they're moving on. Alright, we do go ahead and have a lot of people coming in. If there's a big fight here, Sans comes down and the hogger goes down. Um, Tater goes ahead and actually managed to move back, as does Disborg. But we do have their healer kind of in the middle of nowhere. Upheaval moves in to try and give us some room to get out. Here's a big fight underneath towers. Weapons take a lot of damage. It looks like they're going to get... No, they do get the Rhaegar instead. T-Cat right in the middle of a lot of pain. But there is going to be an effective retreat coming out of Moonstone. That was very, very, very close. I actually thought that the, um, Shyborg, or not Shyborg, the, uh, weapons and the false head were going to go down. But signs point to no right now. Alright, so just going ahead and pushing through the bottom lane. They are up two levels right now. That means they are up 8% um, health and their ability to do 8% more damage compared to their opponents. So it's a very, very rough position to fight in. You should not be looking for a fight. Uh, Discord, you should not be looking for a fight! Fallstead is not with them, though. That is the one advantage they might have. Weapons is coming in from the back, so right now they do have the advantage temporarily. Fallstead is flying up, though. There comes the Gust, pushes everyone into the corner. A lot of damage onto Sinar, Sinar having a little bit of problems back. There is the Ancestral Healing landing on Disborg. We do have a kill onto the Rhaegar. Rhaegar did blow his biggest heal already though, so... Might not be as bad as it could be. Disborg down to about 30% health. He's being focused right now. Weapons is on top of him. There is that Spore. Um, <laughs> I do love that skin and just the little Legos up above him. Disborg, you should not have survived that. I'm sorry, that was not okay. However, in the end, it is only the Rhaegar that goes down. And we do have the second tribute being picked up right now by Mesos. Thinking about boss is Phoenix Rising Moonstone. They do need to be careful here. Boss with all of your soul up. Oh, Sinar took a lot of damage. The Shadow of Bali is just going to... Blink Kill comes out just in time. Um, do we have the... Oh, no, we don't. But when Dovetail just goes straight in. Dovetail is insane. There is the... Dovetail getting a lot of damage. But everyone is... There is the um, Cocoon around the Choke all taking two people out of the fight. There is a Sun going down and Rhaegar goes down. Dovetail is going to be the next to fall, it looks like. Yep, Weapons goes in and takes that out. We do have the Choke all right in the middle of everyone. Does go in and get taken out by that Brightwing. That is a four for nothing in favor of Phoenix Rising Moonstone. They were thinking about boss, and they're like, wait, we've got 30 seconds. Let's just take stuff off the map. Starting with this fort. I hate this fort. Are they actually making a four play? I am not sure that this is a thing. I'm not sure this could be a thing. They're calling GG. Are they actually, now that I say that, they do have 10 seconds. Um, Orpheus not even trying to defend this. So, never mind. I was a doubt. I was a doubting Dennis. Game number one does go in favor of Phoenix Rising Moonstone. Sorry, I got distracted because someone pinged me. I, I hate when people ping me in the middle of the cast, but it's not really reasonable for me to expect. Like, always pay attention to what I'm doing and don't ping during. Oh my god. Like, that is not, that is not okay. I can't do that. That's rude. Alright. Looking at things at the end of the...
today. We do have a Steinar winning the healing battle, um, doing 62,000 healing over the course of the uh, game. Zesty does unfortunately only get 24,000 out. Um, Rhaegar not really known for his big, big, big heal numbers, so that's not the biggest surprise. In terms of damage, we do have Greymane. Again, was kind of taken specifically because they do big, big damage. Gaul does come in second from Shyborg, coming with 39,000. And then the Haka, actually very, very impressive showing, 33,000 damage. In terms of that ever-important soak, we do have Stitch leading the way with 16,000. Orphea coming in second with 11,000. And then Hogger with 10,000. Love to see it. So with that, we'll go ahead and let me go ahead. Actually, here are the talents. If you want to love them, hate them, copy them, condemn them. I'll go ahead and update here. And I will see you guys momentarily for game number two. This is the wrong screen.
Welcome to Infernal Shrines. They banned out the battlefield, but they can't get rid of Diablo altogether. Actually, they totally can. There's only two maps. They had two bans, but they didn't. So we are on to Infernal Shrines. Um, this is going to be a battle over Hogger, I can almost tell you right now, because Hogger is almost like something that both teams enjoy playing. As I already said, Weapons likes his Hogger. And then... Zagzagoom being banned. I'm still surprised about the ban on Vala. I think you might have some success forcing your opponent to ban it out. But if you don't have someone to place it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But still save it for the second ban just to see if you get it for free. But, oh well. Obviously, these teams can do whatever they actually end up wanting to at the end of the day. Um, I'm not here to tell them that they're bad players because... Actually, they're about as skilled as I am. I usually am saying that they're better than I am, but we're both Division D, so come on, come at me. What? Brightly, it's a bright thing. Does look like they decided that Moonstone's um, triple global combat that they don't want to deal with. So they're taking away at least one of them. And the Hogger is banned out. They say, you know what? Weapons does like Hogger, but you're going to take it. And so we don't want you to take it because Hogger is super good at this map. I do not disagree with that decision in the least. Interesting. They don't ban the Taiga, so they take it this time. Shybor going to be going from Gaul to Taiki. Taikus is kind of just an all-around good hero against everyone. Unless you want to go for like a triple. Here's what's actually interesting is that Taikus does do worse whenever you have a very aggressive front line like a triple bruiser comp. Because Taikus can absolutely melt one person, but he has to stand still to do it. So if your entire front line is just barreling into the other team... He, he just has to fall back and he can't actually minigun that well. You have Sinar going ahead and My blades are the end of it. I heard a Sonya, you guys. Teacaps, comes out with the Raven. Again, I don't have to change that. That's fantastic. Dovetail not being able to be on the um, Hogger is going to go ahead and get onto Sonya. Then Juicy Wingman goes to Murrah. Interesting. Murden feels like it doesn't have quite enough lockdown. They, they have a little bit, but I feel like other tanks have more. So if you're going to go with a Tychus, you kind of want to hold people in place. So they're going to ban out the Stukov. They say, yeah, you're kind of lacking a bit of lockdown. Stukov is excellent for lockdown. So Brightwing is gone. Stukov is gone. Neither team actually has a healer yet. Are we going to continue the healer choke? No, we're not. They go in and get rid of the, They say, we have a tank and you don't. So we don't want to deal with Diablo. Diablo is super good on this map. There are walls everywhere. So I definitely agree with that. I do not think that um, it's fun playing into a Diablo on this map. But to be fair, it's not fun playing Diablo on any map. But it's once again going to go with the Hekka. Once again, something I don't have to change. And Mesos actually goes with the Anubrak. Very, very similar draft. So far, only Sinar switching to the Anduin is the only part that's changed. Uh, is Stitch going to go to Falstead? That is the big question. It's extra interesting to see that the one thing that was... Some lives. Interesting. Did not expect that. Zesty going for the thing of Morales. And then Tater going for the Kael'thas. So with that being said, we do go ahead and have our last pick onto Captain Stitch. The wait is and No over. is not going for the false end, it's going with Miss Amazon herself to Cassia. So with that being said, we're going into the game right now. Um, look forward to it. Big things to look for in this map is of course, the question is, I do think the clear coming out of Brickhouse is better. And it seems a little bit more of a single target comp coming out of Moonstone. So. The Brickhouse can kind of bake a bulwark and force Moonstone to come to them because they can just clear a bit faster. But there is only one location, so the fight will happen. And the fight might favor Moonstone slightly, but you know what? We're just going to have to see.
All right, coming into game number two between uh, Brick House and Phoenix Rising Moonstone. We do go ahead, coming in on the side of the blue team. <laughs> we do have Dizzy Wingman on that Murden, Tater coming in on Kale Foss, Shyborg on the Tychus, Zessi on Lieutenant Morales, and Dovetail coming in on Sonia. On the other side, the Principality of Punishment, the Masters of Mayhem, Phoenix Rising Moonstone are represented by Stitch on that Cassia, Mesos on the Anduberak, Sinar playing the Anduin, Teacat on the uh, Grey Mane, and then weapons once again on Dino Boy himself, the Dahaka. With that being said, we do go and have a lot of attention being paid. Weapons is right in the middle of that one. Does miss with the tongue, however, and does be able to get play and bait. You have to the very, very edge of that Pyroblast. Looking at Crossing Town level 1, we do go ahead and have Perfect Storm from the Murden. Extra damage on the Hammer. Uh, we Mana Addict on that Kale Thoth. Not going for Convection for some reason. I can't I can't figure out why. And then, of course, the Thunderstroke. Now we've got to pick him off, guys. Be careful. Sonya has already gone to the top lane. Dahaka is now on their way up to join them. All right, Sonya does get caught with the tongue. Not quite far enough forward in order to actually get pulled back into tower range. This is definitely a engagement that should favor the Sonya. The Sonya has better healing than Dahaka does, especially pre-4. Meanwhile, down here, we do go ahead and have Clear happening. Rotations going back and forth. Sinar and Mesos already heading out. Actually kind of doing a 1-1-3 one, one, comp with Cassia actually staying in the mid to get that soap. This is once again the main Moonstone a slight advantage when it comes to the experience. Mesos doing a great job of anchoring right here, making sure that no one can pass through without him knowing about it and warning the team. Looking up here, about even. Meanwhile, they have gone ahead and started the lower camp. Their opponents are aware of this, and it does look like Murden and Kel'Thoss are on their way down. However, there is a attempt to interrupt that. They are down to the last, last, last minion, and this is picked up. Nice, nice job interfering. Like it. I like it just fine, Tigers. Thank you for asking. It looks like we have started the double soaking phase with both Dahaka and... Although Dahaka's actually... Nope, I guess we're just checking to see... Because they hadn't seen Sonya in a little while. Like, Sonya's not trying to take my camp, are they? The answer is no. No, Sonya's not that crazy. We do have a Mortar Shrine coming up in the middle. Mortar, one of the least desirable ones, especially early on. So we just a lot of damage from that Hungry Hungry Wolf. It's like a Hungry Hungry Kitten, but it's a furry. Hungry Hungry Hippo? Oh my gosh! How did, where did I get Hungry Hungry Kitten from? I have questions for myself. Alright, this shrine is started on the side of Brickhouse. They're moving through, they're going ahead and picking those up. We already have um, seven, seven of the skeletal minions picked up on the side of Brickhouse. Mesos is moving in, looking to engage into this. There is the stun and a lot of damage on the Tychus. Tychus just get blown back and um, a little bit of a disengage happening. As Moonstone occupies the point, they are still 25 away. Our Moonstone weapons once again just looking to attack this. There's a great, great, great lockdown from the Anduin. Double kill onto Murden and Sonya. Weapons is having to use some essence to heal up. But this is going to give a great advantage to Moonstone as they go ahead and clean that up. They are moving into the middle. Going to go ahead and claim this um, Punisher. And great, great job. Weapons does move up to get more soaks. Says they're not going to contest us right now. It's two versus four. Although everyone is back and they've only gotten caught up. They still have another 24 to go. This is the problem that I was talking about. They don't have a lot of AoE, so they are very, very, very slow at clearing this point. Hello, T-Rex. 
nice to see you. When our Punisher does come out in favor of Phoenix Rising Moonstone, it's going to go ahead and start walking across towards this middle keep. We do have the offliners up in the top lane doing their thing. Oh, an unfortunate double stun happening when the John Cena jumps in and has to catch the Murder and Shyborg. But very, very, very quick. Just burn down on this thing. But the front wall does go down. That's about what you look for. You look for the front wall. We are up about a almost a full level on the side of Moonstone, and they're moving down here to go ahead and take this neutral camp. Uh, their opponents are taking the safe camp, the one that is very, very unlikely to be invaded, and indeed will not be. So these two get picked up in rapid succession. Bing, bing. And with that being taken care of, we do have everything just kind of moving through. They are moving for their own camp at this point. Uh, the level 9s are picked up on the side of Moonstone. Do you when you say that? I suddenly, I forget which announcer is, but it's like, night, a triple kill. It feels like it might be Jaina. I'm not sure which announcer it is. Oh, I actually think it's Orphea. It's one of those mages that has five letters in their name and ends with a uh, A. Although I'm remembering that Orphea has six. Whoops, I ruined my own joke. Fantastic, good job, me. Kael'thas is going to finish their Nomad Attic quest. Does that mean they're no longer addicted? Did they finish the 12th up program? I just imagine the, like Kael'thas sitting in, a, sitting in a room and just being like, I, I, can't, I can't stop even thinking about orbs. But that's not really what he would sound like. Shaman Camp is picked up on the side of Phoenix Rising Moonstone. It doesn't look like it's going to trigger so to move over here to this one. Oh, I completely missed that, but yeah, it was like Murden tried to take on a um, four versus one. What's kind of like snapped up, Gritstone does this, but they do finish their uh, Sledgehammer quest. Stormbolt, whatever it's called. Oh, that was the you got to level 10 quest. Similar to Stitches. I actually thought that they finished something. I'm like, oh, what did they do? And I'm like, oh, they got to level 10. Looking at the ultra real quick, we have two, one, one more time. One more time. Ball lightning coming out. We do go and have light bomb. Cursed Bullet and Isolation. Avatar on the other side. Leap. Draken Laser Drill. Interesting. Stem Drone and Kael'thas is going to take the Pyro Blast. My most common announcer is probably Mirahan. I love Mirahan. Mirahan is best. Mirahan is life. Uh, Sonya is not life because Sonya's been collapsed upon. Um, is going to actually survive this. Surprisingly, that was a four man collapse. And Sonya's just like, I'm just going to spin. A lot of ults being used here, but not actually a lot actually uh, occurring from it. A little bit of damage on the Dizzy Wind, it goes in, but we have a Burrow for the map. Nice, nice, nice boot back into the um, ring that almost killed off the Dehaka. That was beautiful to see. We have 10 already. So the clear on the side of Rickhouse is so much better. There is the uh, light bomb burrow charge coming out from Mesos. Mesos goes in. It's a lot of stuff done. Z Wingman goes ahead and falls back. Um, is down to about 500, 500 health. Sonia is once again just twirling. Pirouette of Doom from Sonia. Uh, stop, stop scrolling, Mr. Mouse. Yeah, my mouse is a boy. What of it? Are up to 21 versus 18. They will have to re engage pretty quick. Does it mean that probably needs to not fight for a second? Let that second win. I'm building back up. Class coming in. There is a burrow to safety for Mesos. And then gets leap of faith away. But another leap comes away. Says, you know what? I can also be leapy and faithy. But Tychus does get taken down in the bottom while the tanks were fighting at the top. There is a engage on TCAP. But there is the bouncing of the um, lightning orb. Let's go back and forth. We don't. Burden being taken out as well. A lot of these skeleton wings being picked up. And then we do have the Arcane Punisher being picked up for Phoenix Rising Moonstone. Ah. 
I know I'm... Why do people go on vacation? No one informed me Summer would not be here when I picked up this map. I am offended. Deep offend. Going down. They are having to come back here to defend it, and it looks like the play that has been decided is don't worry about um just go to the other lands to get value. Top lane is gonna to have a hard time getting value because Dovetail is right here. Weapons is kind of winning the 1v1. We're gonna we'll have a hard time pushing that in. However, in the middle, we are gonna go ahead and have the middle fort being taken out by Phoenix Rising Moonstone. All right, there's a great light bomb for a win. We have another kill. We have seven kills to zero in favor of PRM. This game feels close, but that stat sure doesn't make, doesn't make it look close. Like, the, the battles really feel like they can go either way, but then they just keep going the way of PRM. We have an invasion on the shaman camp. Kaz are going to move forward with a lot of a lot of doggies. That'd be a weird superpower to have. You could just summon like dogs forever. It would be cool for a while, but then you have like a hundred dogs, and you're just like, I need to stop using my power, but it's all it's the only thing that defines me. We go ahead and have the other sh um Kajra camp being picked up. Shaman's going to be moving by one more time. One more time. The problem is these are, I mean, the get experience is worth doing, but they're not going to be very effective because your opponent has really nothing else to do, so they're just going to stop that. Level 16 is picked up on the side of Phoenix Rising Moonstone. We have Epicenter, Static Electricity, Inner Focus, Alpha Killer, and Tunneling Claws. And now, the forces of Hela are banging upon the very gates of heaven. They let us in. Also, can you just like stay here while our shaman push forward? That'd be great. We'd love that. So this should be a frozen punisher coming out of this one, I believe. Yep, an active frozen shrine. There is a surprising platoon coming in. Murden is caught. Slight bit of and oh great, great. Does he mean does go ahead and jump out? I think that was a like reflex jump. Like I need to get out of here. I didn't really think about where he was going. But we'll actually survive. A lot of ults were used there. We still do have leap and pyroblast up on the side of and there goes the pyroblast. Stitch getting getting targeted by it. It's going. I don't think this will kill. Definitely not with that extra healing from Sinar. There is the leap coming in. A little bit of a split fight right now, but we do have six moving back in. So now all ults are down except for Cursed Bullet, which is back up. Uh, ult will be back up sooner for Moonstone because they use theirs first. That's how time works. Shrine is active, and it does look like Moonstone is moving straight towards it. Tea Cat leading the way. Past it. All right, all right, the fourteen skeletal minions on this frozen shrine. The frozen drifts of Northrend come to the frozen. Come to Diab. I don't know. I try and think of cool things to say, and then I just kind of fail. I should probably stay on the action. I'm like, I can still see a little bit. What? I control the camera. What am I doing? All right, here's everyone else moving through. There is the nano boost coming out. Um, one to Tychus, who's 
And that surprised me a bit. I don't know that Tychus is the best option for... Oh, that's because that's not a nano boost. Never mind. Would you go and have a kill onto Morales and Murder? Basically, um, Eminem is dead, is what I'm saying. Moose comes out, and this may be the end of the game. We do have 30 seconds till I come back. Um, the Dragon Laser still comes out to be a pain, but it's going to... Oh, 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 oh! The massive, massive stun, and we do have Tychus being just taken out. Did step up, trying to defend a little bit, but was not able to do so. I do have to question the pick on Dragon Laser Drill. I do feel like Odin would have gotten more value on this map. They may have thought they had enough AoE already. That may be the call. We would have Sony going down, and this almost assuredly will be the end of the game. Um, only Kalfas up. We do have Murder and Morales coming out up in a second, but they want to have a, a lot of damage to chase people away. War is down to 30%. There is the jump from uh, the protector. John Cena punches away, and we do have the Angel crumbling. Game number two does go with the in favor of Phoenix Rising Moonstone. Alright. That let me go in very quickly see if I can get an interview set up. One second, you guys. Move down there. See if we get joined. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and start looking at, in terms of healing numbers, actually very, very close. Uh, Sinar doing great, great heals, as, as T-Rex said. But Zesty not being a slouch. 58 to 45,000 overall. Hello, Stitch. Hey, hey. So, first of all, obviously, super congratulations. Um, as I said at the beginning of the cast, this is actually your first game of the season. Yeah. So, obvious gimme question, but uh, how do you feel? No, it feels good to come out, right, and start off the season with a win. Um, you know, we've been doing a bunch of practicing and trying really hard, getting some great coaching, and, you know, I the other team put up a, a good fight in both of those games, so it was fun. Well, it certainly looked like it was a very, very interesting match. Um, so you actually did get map pick both games. Were these just comfort maps for you, or was there some reason you specifically thought you'd have an advantage over this team? Uh, to be perfectly honest, we didn't really scout much, uh, if any, before this thing, and we like big maps, we always have, and we just, Curse is a good one, and Infernal Shrines is a super fun map, so it was really just more about uh, comfort, I think, and, you know, Sonar filling in for us um, on Healer, and he did a fantastic job tonight, so... Oh, that certainly did. I am still a little annoyed that Summer wasn't here. Like, what? But clearly she did not just clear her vacation with me ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, looking at game number one, I just have to ask, what was going through your head when that show golf first showed up? Uh, it was a huge surprise. Did not see that coming at all. Uh, and then basically just shifted into knowing that uh, Chogall can't put that much map pressure on since it's, you know, two people in one. And we just decided to go with that triple global comp and try to stay away from them as much as possible early. Well, certainly, certainly, certainly made a lot of sense to go that route. It was funny because when I saw the ban on Tychus in the first, like, four bands, I jokingly was like, okay, so that's probably a Diablo, could be a Deathwing or a Chogall. You don't actually expect it to be Joe Gall when you say that. Yeah, that was a, a really early pick on that Joe Gall too. Then we were like, whoa. But, yeah, it, I mean, it, it makes the game fun, right, when you see picks like that. Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm, I'm very, very happy they went with Joe Gall. It was just also something that caught me off guard, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So going into game number two, um, this is obviously Infernal Shrines had a little bit more of a normalish pick or normalish playstyle compared to the two two teams. But I did notice your team largely didn't change. Of your like five picks, I think three of them stayed the exact same. So 
you said you kind of shifted into the more map based game on, on the Jogal. What made you decide to stay that way? Uh, I think right now, you know, Dahak is just a super strong pick. Um, and then the Grey Main just uh, to burn down the tanks. We were pretty. We were gonna try to take the Tychus was our game plan, and they banned it away uh, in game. Or no, they sorry, they took it in game two, and so we just shifted into you know more of a pretty standard comp, like you said. Well, I mean, it it definitely, definitely, definitely worked out for you. Fantastic. Yeah, the guys played. Um, the guys played great, right? Um, both teams I thought played exceptionally well. My guys, you know, put in a lot of effort in practice and showed out there tonight. So anything that you anything you would say uh, moving forward in terms of like expectations for the season, uh, words of warning for your next team or for your next opponent? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think, you know, we're a new team this season. So, you know, I think for any new team, it's a good goal just to try to make it to the playoffs. So I think that's, you know, where we're shooting at first. Um, our next game's on Thursday. So, you know, everybody tune in and watch that. and. Should be fun. We'll definitely look forward to it. Last question I always ask, or actually I never ask, but I'm trying to ask more. <laughs> uh, where does Phoenix Rising Moonstone come from? What made you guys decide on the, on that name? Uh, it was actually a joke with um, between myself and Kobe when I was looking to put a new team together for under the Phoenix Rising banner. I told him I don't care if they call it Moonrock, and then he just actually went with Moonstone, and that's how that came about. That actually sounds entirely like I know both of you, so that makes <laughs> a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, all right, that's all the questions I had prepared. Let me go ahead and turn it over to you. Um, what shout outs do you want to give? Uh, again, just shout out to the team. Shout out to the opposing team tonight. Like that, you guys played great. Um, our coaches, Alfie, Gingy Boy, uh, they've helped us out a ton. And uh, yeah, that's really it. Shout out to you for casting. Uh, what am I thinking? How did I? How did I forget to do that? It's, I'm casting so much, people don't even think about it. They're like, this is just what Rocket does. I can't. Honestly, I think you've cast probably 80% of the, all the games I've played in NGS over the last two seasons. <laughs> I I'm, just, I'm just used to it now. <laughs> I mean, I do definitely do this a lot. Um, it's a bit of a problem because I keep trying to take on more projects. And I'm like, I do not have time. Why do I keep doing this? <laughs> but... Uh, congratulations. Um, enjoy the after party. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And good luck on Thursday. Putting in two games in one week. Uh, obviously, some of that had to do with trying vacations. I'm sure that you had people caught off guard by the beginning of the season because you've still got people on vacations when you finally had to actually play it. Yeah, hopefully uh, after this week, there won't be any more of that. Nobody has any anything planned, so hopefully we'll be good for the rest of the season. Well, Definitely look forward to seeing it and look forward to hopefully seeing you in playoffs. So keep playing like you did tonight, and I have no doubt you'll be there. Yeah, thank you very much. My pleasure. And with that, you have a great I'll night. You too. And with that, I should mention in an hour and a half, I actually have another game. Um, I'm going to be casting. I've already. It's Phoenix Rising Jade against. I've forgotten the other team. I would have forgotten that team. I am like forever between everything and it's a problem but i'll be back in an hour and a half but you know what that's an hour and a half from now there's no way i can just fill space for an hour and a half i don't care how interesting i am um there's a limit so it does look like we are at 8 30. we'll go ahead and move stay in the d northeast area and go over and see bull moose party versus council of mages this apparently is just a d division fiesta fiesta going on Go ahead and get that set up. I always have to remember how to spell Bankai's name because it's different on Twitch than it is everywhere else. But you know what? I got it, and that's what matters.